Are you ready to take down Karma? Yeah. The concept? Both? Of Karma? Both? Okay. I mean, he might be feeling some, depending on what happens today. We will find yeah. out. He'll be receiving some, hopefully. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's going. There's no, like, pre court convo, just straight. Oh, okay. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Ed uh, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Okay. <laughs> very well. Apparently, the prosecution is also ready. That is very presumptuous of you. He might not yeah. be. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's having a panic attack and you've just dismissed this. <laughs> um. Uh, who's the judge here? Anyway, I, I established in part one that Phoenix Wright, I think, has a heart condition because of the sweats. But, uh, <laughs> like, these are definitely... This is a heart attack. Like, this is yeah. not good. But, Mr. Von Carver, your opening statement. Uh, very well. No opening statements. So, uh, this guy... <laughs> I hate him. He's just awkward. He's just awkward as sin. Yeah. Like, he's, he's unbelievably awkward. Do you reckon under that neckerchief it's a pair of scissors or a penis? Because they're, they're, it could be could be either. Could you be know balls, what? I, be... Kept, I kept thinking about that, but I didn't want to make the joke because I, did, I don't know. I felt like now wasn't... Now I is the perfect time. The <laughs> but now is the perfect time. You can say it's a cross-section of a... Of a penis, if you want. I don't know. <laughs> Been split in twain? Yes, of course. Yeah. Not so fast, Judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Right, of course. Right, that's a bit uh, pretentious, but okay. A prediction! Today's trial will end three minutes from now. This is so. This is like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. They we can't make jokes. Like We've got a timer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's actually going to be the case. We'll find out in a second. Um, order. Order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? What? Excuse me? Can you object, like, the judge? Like, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We will have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. Uh, right. Is this because of statute of limitations? I don't know. <laughs> I call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Wow. He's very asleep. He, it will not be over yeah. in three minutes because he's very asleep. Yeah. Witness, state your profession. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the proprietor of the restaurant, the Wet Noodle in Gord Lake. And I uh, also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, yep, yep I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. Objection. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah! I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Starting in about two minutes from that moment. But five minutes. <laughs> Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate! Yeah, right. The witness will state his name. <laughs> well, uh... I I'm not really uh, sure, yep. What do you mean? My, um, memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ago, he cannot recall his own name. He can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we, witness? All right. Okay. I was cooking pasta. <laughs> it was the night of the 24th, just after midnight, yep. 
I was uh, in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual. Then I heard a bang, yep. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just a floating on the lake. When I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. Hmm, very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. I've got no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge your verdict now. Uh, yes, of course, Mr. Wright. Well, we have to yeah. cross-examine. What are you <laughs> saying? Of course, I'll cross-examine the witness. Very well, you may begin. Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma. Three minutes just passed! I see. Well then, let's just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. What is happening? <laughs> okay. Uh, mental. Alright. It's not the 24th right. just after midnight. Alright, press. I'll do well, just after midnight, you say? It's all the times are so ambiguous. Yeah. Yeah, just around then. Are you sure? Pretty sure, yep. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. I asked him and he remembered. Isn't that right? Uh, no, don't glare at me like that. I, uh, I remembered it. Clearly, I did help. You see? Continue. Okay. Hold it, it's not a restaurant. Is there anyone who can verify that? Well, I guess Polly could. Th that's not good enough for a court of law. Mr. Wright, exactly what's not good enough. Uh, Your Honor, this Polly is a parrot. A parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy. <laughs> <laughs> the prosecution concedes that we cannot prove the witness was in the shop. Witness! Please continue. I had a ba no, I didn't mean to go back. Eh, yeah, I, I, I just... Okay, had a bang. And where did the bang seem to come from? Christ. From the lake, I think, yeah. Are you certain? Yep. Good. Continue. Okay. Was there someone in the boat? It was pretty far out there, I couldn't see clearly. But I figure there was two men out there, yep. But you couldn't see them clearly? Yep, at the time that is. At the time? Right now that, eh? Alright. So you heard two gunshots total? Yep. That's what Lana said in her testimony yesterday. Okay. So, by your window? Yep, by my window. Right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fall was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. I have a bad feeling about this. Uh, that man was the defendant? He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Okay, interesting. What? 
Are you sure? Uh -uh. Dad! <laughs> dead certain, Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by, too. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy! <laughs> he just stacked. Oh my god. <laughs> this sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. For karma, he lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fool. Oh, oh no. Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I better act quick or this trial is going to be over. Raise an objection, I guess. Objection! Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? And the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly. That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. Hmm. The judge is lost in form. What should I do? Under his objection. <laughs> Your Honor, the witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead. But his word is all we have. If he were telling a lie, Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Uh, are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. <laughs> Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> this court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No! <laughs> this court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Did I just lose? The accused will surrender to the court immediately to be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. The court is adjourned. That's meant to happen, right? What? Uh, oh, um, I don't know. Me? Me! <laughs> huh? Ah! What? <laughs> um, excuse me? <laughs> Why? How? What? There Larry should be base has entered the court. There would be fifty police on your ass. You can't just enter a courtroom. <laughs> like he's not a member of the jury. He's not with us. There's no. He would have had to barge in here and take the stand. Like that's super illegal and dangerous. <laughs> Can you imagine if the judge smacked his gavel and be like, "Let him cook." Yeah. <laughs> you must let him cook. Larry, what are you doing here? Listen, you gotta listen to me. I... I was... I was there in the park the night of the murder. I... I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But, but today I remembered it! Remembered what? The gunshot! I heard it too! Order. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. 
Oh, one moment, Mr. Von Kava. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I, I did. A gunshot that night. <laughs> I was sitting here in the audience listening to the... Whenever he does his thumb up, I also do it. I think... It's, uh, I don't know why. <laughs> Anyway. When when Maya does her puffy cheek shit, I, I kind of do it too. <laughs> Good. You, you know, you've seen it, yeah. so you probably know what I'm talking about. <laughs> then I realised something he said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's it's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. Order. Order. Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. Because it's super illegal. Uh, yeah. I'm not <laughs> quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick! This is it. Larry's given us one final chance at this. She's right. I mean, it wasn't Larry. It could make things even worse. Well, it can't actually get worse. He is guilty, like, currently. Like, yeah. They could, uh, either, worst case scenario, he he's still guilty. Or not. <laughs> like, yeah. this is his literal only shot. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. It can. Uh, allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. They should play the guilty scene, but in reverse. Like, yeah. Yes, you know what I mean? But yeah. That'd be funny. Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What the? the my monitor is falling apart. <laughs> what? <laughs> my monitor is fine. I fixed it. Okay. The screen just fell out. The, like, it's, it's just like decomposing. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, oh my god. Weird. Um, yeah. The court will adjourn for a five minute recess while you fix your monitor. After that, we will hear this new witness. <laughs> court is adjourned. But it just fell out. You know the monitor has a frame? Yeah. The, the screen was just fell out. Yeah, was right. <laughs> that was so weird. <sighs> That was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. <laughs> Hope the edge was worth it. <laughs> Edgeworth. I've, I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night. Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth? Huh? You say something right? Yeah, a lot of things. Uh, you seem out of it. What's wrong? It, oh, it's nothing. Huh? Um, Mr. Edgeworth? There's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. So I shot him. Like, oh, okay, good. back in you go, <laughs> guilty, let's do it. <laughs> when he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I just, I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. I see. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? 
Von Karma has only ever ran perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. Right. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's quite obvious. <laughs> okay. It's quite obvious. We're going to kill him. We're going to end his career. <laughs> <laughs> it's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No 10 minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. Moo! Hey, it was 15 <laughs> minutes. 15! Everything's on Larry now. Yeah, it went really bad for me, I'm aware. <laughs> but in fairness, it's not my fault, because the judge is fucking insane. Like, why is he listening to this lunatic? The court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. It's December 25th! <laughs> right! Leave it to me! Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. Just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. Okay. I'm everyone. Great. <laughs> that night you're I was out in a, boat, <laughs> in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something, and uh, I uh, found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back into the, uh, the rental uh, shop dock. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. Okay. So, let's see. Alright, go around the back of the lake. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? There were so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Ah. Um, well, uh, okay, first of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11, when I went out in the boat. But that time, everyone had gone home for the night. Or by that time. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out on a boat at such a late hour? I was looking for something, and I, uh, I found it. Looking for something? Uh, yeah! Mr. Bartz, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Looks likely he was hunting for this gaudy. That's surprisingly close to the truth in a sense. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. Let me slip to the boat back in the rental job dock. Around what time was that? Uh, well, let's see. I think I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12? Yeah? You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face! I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches <laughs> these days, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> At this bad. Where did the sound come from? Oh, yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? <laughs> yeah, I looked. Looked out of the lake, but I didn't see a boat. That's interesting. At 15, like, 15, I'm going to say it was probably at 10 too, because that's when the first picture was taken on Modder's camera. Yeah. So, 25 minutes before the murder happened, they were not in that boat. So, wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order! Order! Well, Mr. Butts? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, he was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, 
Okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case! <sighs> I had that single gunshot, I went home. So, you, you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah! Huh. Well, Nick? Hmm. It's a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. That's alright, that's for day three. Okay, so... Yeah. That night I was out in the, bo in the boat on the lake. I was looking for something and I found it, right. I quietly slipped the boat back in the rental shop dock. Then just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after that single gunshot, I went home. Well... The thing is, that's technically not wrong, because like... Like, the thing is, like, it... The, the first photo... Uh... Where's the first photo? Uh, two sounds like gunshots just after midnight. I thought the yeah, first photo was it, before midnight. Yeah, so there was a photo that 11.50. Yeah, 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 yeah. Second... Second late photo. Wait, the second photo was taken at 11.50. So, it shows an empty lake taken automatically on 11.50, which is around... That's the bang he's heard. Yeah. Because... Um... Oh, right, when it says second lake photo, it just means it was the second one we were given. It's not... Right, okay, sorry. Um, right. Okay, so that's the one he heard. Yeah. And it, it shows an empty lake. Oh, we can present that. I guess so. I'm, I am going to save. <laughs> now that we know about this, I'm gonna... This is important. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see a boat. Um, so, if we present this, in theory, this is it, right? Your Honor, what do you think about the way this is there? Yeah, okay, never mind. Alright, yeah, alright, yeah, no, I, oh, I know. Alright, yeah, I didn't think that worked, well, alright. Well, I was hoping, like, because it, it wasn't an objection, but it was a point to make. Like, it was to prove that, oh, no, there was no boat. Because this picture shows the empty, like, okay. Didn't see a okay. boat. I had a single gunshot, so I went home. It's a contra- like- Because the thing is like- contradiction. Yeah, because the thing is like- It makes sense you didn't hear a second bang. Like, the, the second bang ha happened 25 minutes later. So yeah, you're not gonna stick around for 25 minutes if you can't see anything. You're gonna be like, oh, something's happening maybe in the woods over there. Maybe I, Or maybe I misheard something, I'm just gonna leave. Like, it- It doesn't- It's not a contradiction. Where's the contradiction here? So I was out in a boat on the lake. Nothing wrong there. I was looking for something and you found it. Gordy, whatever, no contradiction. Quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. Um. Is that a contradiction? Well, it's not a contradiction, but it's the... Well, okay, let's look at our evidence again. Set to take lap pictures of loud noises. Time of death was, we know it was one meter away in the boat at 12, 15, 25th. There it is. We know from this image that there was an empty lake and that is going to be relevant. We're going to, like, Karma's going to try and, like, present something and this is going to be our proof that there was an empty lake because he doesn't have this photo. He only has this photo. So we are yeah. going to need this. Um, Misty is not relevant. This is not relevant. Let's look at the map. So, when's the rental play? But it's it's not really relevant. Um, found in the victim's body, the ballistic markings match the murder weapon's barrel. Um, doesn't matter. Five, three times. This will be relevant at some point. Two sounds like gunshots just after midnight. It wasn't after midnight, but we're gonna gloss over that. Metal detector won't help. Polly isn't gonna help. The file, I mean, what does the file say? Um, uh, an air in the elevator was oxygen depleted at the time of incident. No clues found on the scene. Uh, defense okay. name trapped in the elevator retained from the last trial. I know this is not relevant, I wanna know what it says. Uh, one bullet found the hard metal weapon was fired twice. 
a couple of traps in the elevator with, Ed was with the Edgeworths' um, memory loss due to oxygen depletion after his arrest. Fiance Polly Jenkins committed suicide. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh. That was omitted from the info we had before. His parrot is named after his fiance who committed but Polly, suicide. Polly, oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ. Oh. Okay. Did, could you, if you prevent, if you presented that, would something that happened? Because we we never knew about that when he was. No, but I don't think we could have. Um, I don't know. I, he wouldn't remember. He only remembers stuff after the case. So. Right. Okay. And this is a photograph of the scene of the murder, which... Okay, where's... Where's... So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. Just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. If it turns out the contradiction is there are two gunshots, I'm going to be livid because... Technically speaking, it makes perfect sense for the left before the second one. Like, it... Yeah, but, like, we need... It's really difficult. It's really difficult to build a series of events, like an image in my head, mm. of the timings between the gunshots. Mm. Because I'm thinking bang, bang, bang. But that's but not what, the case. So bang... That's not the case, right? So it's like bang, 15 minutes pass, and then in another two bangs. Like that just that doesn't make any sense. Well, but it's I not don't... even it's not even that because there were f there are two photos, but there were three bangs. It was fired three times, yeah. but there were only two photos. So hmm, maybe I maybe I do. What was Lot's description? I heard two sounds. Maybe I present that? I heard a single gunshot off his off screw. Present that. Two sounds. Yeah. It's that. Jesus fucking yeah. Christ. That's bollocks though! <laughs> because they have him 25 minutes apart! He should have left! Yeah. <laughs> like No! Wait he a could sec, have Larry. not been around. <laughs> uh, what? You only heard one bang. You sure? That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? <laughs> oh my god. Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot. Are you sure? Uh, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Yeah? Not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I, uh, I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude! With my headphones! What?! <laughs> order! Uh, order! And, and stop that booing! Mr. Butts! <laughs> you were listening to the radio with your headphones. Yeah! So what? That a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm. Mr. Von Karma. Your opinion. Waste of time. I do not accept this witness, nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Yep. Yep, let's continue. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah! Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. <laughs> right, leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. What Larry heard. I heard come a come a come a come a come a chameleon. Yeah. There he is! Just to my left! Well, I'm running. 
<laughs> I was listening to murder on the dance floor. Yeah. <laughs> what? Too soon? <laughs> it's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an old request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud, like. <laughs> I'm not sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. You were listening to your radio at a high volume. Yeah, what's the big problem? Can a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? Maybe it was multiple gunshots. It sounded like a drum beat, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. I was listening to Phil Collins. <laughs> Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. Oh my god, I actually called it. Yeah. Can you imagine if it was the like, and it's all been a pack of lies. Dun 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 boom boom boom. Yeah. I can feel it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Just as like all this was happening. Yeah. yeah. True enough. It is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me. DJ, a an announcer, the, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright, that is actually a very good point. I can't yeah. believe I'm continuing the charade. Well, unless it's a reggae station, they talk while the song plays. Okay. <laughs> In my experience, anyway. Uh, it's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. Just, just played last Christmas. Uh, yeah. So you turned on the radio, right? I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know. You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve, alone. I shouldn't have said anything. That's why I was listening to all the questions. You dropped acid. Did you see that? <laughs> Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that night? Well, it's technically relevant, because if... Presumably the radio station will have a, like... A play, a recording, Podcast, like, a play, but Yeah, absolutely. So, so if, was, if he knows the exact yeah. words the DJ said, they can verify the exact it. time that happened, which yeah. I presume will be 11.50, give or take. So, anyway, real yeah. booming loud, like. So, real booming loud. Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on. Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. I'm sure I heard that gunshot. All right. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can't. Nah, I can't prove it, but I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? Okay. What did she say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question, only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care. We should care, yeah. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should! Why? Uh... Well, how do you know if we don't ask, hmm? F fine, very Oh my well. god, that worked. Here <laughs> you go, Phoenix! <laughs> Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? To all you single lovers out there, this one's for yeah. you. Yeah. Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Uh-huh. 11.50. Oh. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. <laughs> hmm. Everyone come on was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. This is the most ludicrous test. Your Honor, gonna... how sexy she is is irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. Gotta press it until we can get to the bottom of what happened. Okay, so it's lonely um, being alone on Christmas Eve. Shortly after, I was driving home for Christmas. 
Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was listening to the All Request show on the radio, see? I was listening to real booming. But I'm sure I heard the gunshot. Remember exactly what the dude was saying. Yeah, at no point did they mention the DJ's gender, so I was surprised that Phoenix said she. Like, yeah. Uh, j just Maybe because, that's like. like a localization error or something. Well, it was just, it, yeah, I guess. I was just like, oh, okay. Like, I, like, I, I didn't. Didn't think they stated any gender, but yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, and just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Okay, so, again, let's save. Just because I like saving, okay? <laughs> um, so... Okay, this is where the meme comes from, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's almost Christmas. I mean, I'm assuming it's this. It was taken at 11.50. It, it, yeah. But... I'm gonna present it, and the judge is gonna be like, oh, "I don't see how this is relevant." I'm gonna take it at this exact time. <laughs> Your Honor, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, of course. It doesn't. It's the thing. It's not a contradiction, but it is a point, a very valid it's a point. point. Yeah. It is a photo connected to the thing he said. <laughs> no, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> What? It's annoying that there's not an option to present an objection versus a, like, backing up. Like, two different things. I wonder if that's a thing they add in later games. Because, like, it is important to be able to back up a fact. Like, if you said, if, if, if you say you heard a yeah. gunshot at a point when someone said, Hey, it's almost Christmas, and you can present a photo that proves that. Like, it's, yeah. oh. Yeah, because the thing is... He's just come out of nowhere, right? And he's saying all these things, and we have to take his word for it, right? So, what you've said would be exactly how, you know, you think, oh, well, this checks out. This checks oh. out, this checks out. Which is, which is exactly how... Oh, maybe I need to present this, because this is not almost Christmas. This is after Christmas. This is after Christmas, right. yeah. But it's still, it's still just an annoying, like, why can't I do both? Like, why can't I help back yeah. up a fact? Like, but alright. Uh, I didn't, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> yeah, it's this, alright. Cool, good. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I do not scare that easily. <laughs> There's something the matter, Mr. Wright. Your Honor. Did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas, when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> it, it. It does mean that, yeah. Do yeah. you realise what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard that gunshot after midnight. This photograph is irrefut irrefutable. Is that the word? That's dyslexia. That is exactly it. Thank irrefutable, you. Yeah. Proof of this fact. I ruined the tension. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what the time. Oh, sorry. Let's see what the time was on the photograph taken when the gun triggered Miss Hart's camera. 12, 15, 25, 0, 15, 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order, order! What does this mean? The two prime witnesses heard gunshots after midnight? However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious! What? Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Bunce's claim that he heard the gunshot before he died? Larry's right. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence that there was a gunshot before midnight. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Look Take at that. this. Look at this. Oh, this was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. It wasn't yesterday, it's two days ago at this point, okay. The yeah. timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50pm. Hmm. 
but there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. The camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha. Uh -huh. Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50pm. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that this is the case. Then, where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshot with a 25 minute pause between them. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes. There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed triggering the camera. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove the loud noise at 11.50 was indeed a gunshot? I can. Be sure to call evidence if you have any. The gun itself, it has fired three times. This is my evidence. The murder weapon. Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, when then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. And also, me banging my hand on this podium would have set off that camera. Order. Order! Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots. Separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Oh, uh -uh, I'd better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ah! What's, what's wrong, Nick? I don't know. <laughs> I have it. I have it. Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murder in... Uh, uh, sorry, in... The uh, murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure out this out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch and I'm gonna run with it. Right. I mean, is it safe? Safe? <laughs> We've already got on a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. Like you said earlier. Don't take credit for this, Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> you just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Okay. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? It's been, like, a month and a half since I did the Steel Samurai case, and I'll be honest, I don't remember much about it. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Oh. So you finally realize the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Oh, wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, Rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant Edgeworth and the victim Robert Hammond were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been a suicide. Well... 
The guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 0, 0, 0, 15. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. I did say that I thought that might be the case, like right at the beginning. But I yeah, don't like know. What's... What scenario are they just firing bullets and then 25 minutes yeah, later? Yeah, but who... Why, why do they fire it again? Like, why, yeah, why are there two people standing in a boat? And... Like, they're why? trying to demonstrate... I think that he's trying to demonstrate what happened years ago because it's really similar to the case in the... Right, 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 right. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think... Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Right, but who's he demonstrating it to? Because it can't be the person who was killed. He was demonstrating... So it was. it's the guy defending the, um, the guy who killed his dad. No, but he's dead. He's the one who's dead. If he died 25 minutes prior, he can't be the one in that boat. He's in the lake, but he can't be the one in that boat. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. So he... he... It's a different guy in that picture. Yes. Completely. Yes, but who right. is the question? Okay. I like your theory about demonstrating it. I think you're right. But who's he demonstrating it to? Yeah. Interesting. Because I'm imagining I'm imagining Edgeworth needs clarity. He needs closure. Yeah, yeah. So the guy involved was he he, he just like how how is this case solved? Mm. How is this solvable? Yeah. Mm, we'll see. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. Okay. The mur okay, the murderer and Hammond, Ed Edgeworth and Hammond. So Edgeworth and the murderer, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Because but... that makes that makes Edgeworth seem um, innocent. Yeah. But. Why did they not shoot Edgeworth? I mean, I think this is right, but I don't understand why. I guess we'll find out. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. Oh, interesting. What? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. Oh, that's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous! Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right, it's... I don't know. It's not a lot of heart. It's not Edward. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, we, we, we don't, just don't know. know then. Yeah. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know. Ah! Again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop. That old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of the cra crime was not on a boat? What? Well then, where did the murderer take place? Should have judged where the murder really took place. Uh, the boathouse? Like, if he, did he, did someone fall in? Do we actually know if someone fell in? What, fell the in lake. the lake? Well, yeah, so... I don't know. Um, I'm, I presumed that the body was put into the lake. 
Oh, I think the murderer, right? The murderer is standing in front of Miles Edgeworth, leaps, leaps into the lake. Mm. Miles Edgeworth, um, what the hell? What the yeah. hell just happened? He just dived in the lake. Picks up the gun. What's this? Oh, it's a gun. Whoa. Yeah. Right? I think that's what's happened. Yeah. Miles doesn't witness. I keep thinking, here's the thing. The way it plays in the cutscene, I keep thinking that Miles has just witnessed a guy get shot. But yeah. no. He's witnessed a guy just jump in a lake. That's yeah. different. That's different. Yeah. <laughs> so But he might have seen Hammond's body. It might have like floated around, like near it or something. Because it's foggy, he might not have seen it before, but if it drifted towards the boat, it might be like, oh shit, there's a body here. Um, but where did the murder happen? I'm going to assume at the boat shack, because he. We know for a fact that Larry went there to place the canister. No, but that was multiple days beforehand, wasn't it? But he did go there to return the boat, so he would have heard the gunshot because it was close by. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say here. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. <laughs> I'm going in multiple directions here, oh my god! <laughs> that night he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. Aimlessly, doing a terrible job. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned the boat? The boat shop? Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Uh, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning... And I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. Oh, this is intense music. Let's go! That night, yeah. the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> the caretaker shot him! <laughs> I, I have a false memory of his fiance. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, this was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry uh, heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became he became Robert Hammond. Then, he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then, who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? Oh, uh, the boat... Who fired the, the boat pistol caretaker. on the boat? You, because... Well, you were saying, like... Edgeworth said that he picked up the gun out of disbelief, out of shock, yeah. and the reason for that, the gun did fire, but it's the caretaker trying to describe what happened that day about his father. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like, oh, um, it, we, we've, also, we've the pieced it all together the like with hand. the wrong people. Yeah. Oh, this is a, such a crucial time and I've got, I've got dinner. I'll be like 15 minutes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Good stuff. Right. Uh, okay. I'll be 30. I'll make dinner for myself. Right, okay, then no worries. The boat shop caretaker did it, right? I'm pretty, pretty sure. We, 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 that, yeah, yeah. We, we mused on it for, for about 40 minutes. You yeah. had dinner, I made dinner and ate dinner. Good time, good time. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Okay, so there is one thing I want to mention here. Um, whenever Lotta said she heard two sounds like gunshots. My brain always thought she meant both instances, the one at 10-2 and the one at quarter past, because there were two photos. I didn't realize she yeah. meant there were two at quarter past. Like bang, bang. Yeah. Uh, so I've been misinterpreting that the whole time. But anyway, wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. Because the first shot missed. To create well, a witness. No, to create... To create a witness. 
No, I think I think it's true. Create a witness to, to, because the first shot missed. I'm sorry, but I don't care how drunk and old this guy is. He was standing right next to them. He couldn't have missed. Yeah. If he had that, I think it's the create. I don't know. I think but I don't I'm gravitating why. towards that. Yeah, I think so as well. But I don't know. He why. wants to create. He wants to create the crime. He's trying to paint. He's he's trying to. He, he maybe he's trying to frame Miles. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I guess we'll say that. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness. The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then. The murderer jumps on the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. What if Miles just didn't pick up the gun? <laughs> I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realise that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honour. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Guilty. Bailiff! Bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly. Okay. Mm. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? Oh, what White has said is mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry. I can't say what it was. Hmm. Do you want to be random mm. bailiff? Okay. Your honor, sir! Bailiff, we're conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He, he isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? Find him, quickly! We cannot allow him to get away! Oh dear. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Uh, it goes without saying, but I cannot declare a verdict in, under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. A request for the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. Can a witness just walk out of a court? I don't know. This boat shop guy is slippery. Mm. He, he's very slippery. Yeah. Yay, Nick, you did it! Yeah, but I'm presuming in the trial tomorrow we get to use the parrot and it will be like twin beaks. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about that. What could I want to say. I was. Yes. <laughs> well, it was worth it. It was Good. 100% worth it. <laughs> I, I want there to be a David Lynch kind of character in. um. <laughs> There's a scene in Twin Peaks where David Lynch, he's like, 
he's annoyed with someone and they're yakking on at him and then he just says you remind me of a mexican chihuahua he <laughs> <laughs> doesn't say chihuahua he says chihuahua <laughs> oh wow that's so funny <laughs> um yeah. yeah well at least we got out from under that guilty verdict and what about larry that was something else even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. Just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's on us. On, I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Ashworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. <gasps> I'm sorry. But I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No. There's so little time left. I want to tell you. Get To get it off my chest, but... Mm, I cannot make up my mind. What's this about, Edgeworth? It's... A nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Did he kill his dad by accident? Oh, well, maybe. Oh, don't do that, To game. be continued. <laughs> and... Why? <laughs> I know why, but why? <laughs> there, there, there is a movie called Memories of Murder, and it has one of the best, probably the best ending shot of a movie I have ever seen. Wow. It, it, it's, the, the whole two-hour movie is, is worth watching just for this ending shot. It's amazing. Right. And what just happened just now was reminded me in two ways. He said a memory of a murder, and also the, just the fate of black to yeah. be continued was just like perfect. Oh man. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> <laughs>